Thanks for rolling up. YouTube Lamari Certified Pilot. Got the munchies main tearing up these sunflower seeds right now. Let's jump into uh jump into today's video more. Alex, I want to talk to you about a different book, though, than your commentary on COVID. And it's just interesting because our audience has mixed views on this. Um, my view is pretty well known. I'm not a fan of marijuana or weed. I think that there's an untold story around the consumption of marijuana that isn't always highlighted in the media. You wrote a book called Tell Your Children the Truth About Marijuana, Mel Mental Illness, and Violence. Tell us about the arguments you make in the book. Tell us why you wrote the book. And did you come into like beginning in, with any sort of opinion before you went on your research journey? Real quick, real quick. Um, you all know who Charlie Kirk is? I don't. I don't know. I don't know who that is. Are we supposed? Am, am I supposed to know who this dude is? If he don't smoke weed, why is he talking about weed? Yeah, hey, what you talking about weed for, bro? Sure. So Tell Your Children came out in 2019, about three and a half years ago now, almost. Um, and I wrote it over the previous couple of years. Uh, my wife is a, a psychiatrist, a forensic psychiatrist, actually. So that means she deals with the criminally mentally ill, uh, mainly. And, um, and she uh, had seen a lot of patients who um, had committed crimes under the influence of cannabis and sometimes other drugs, too, but, and sometimes alcohol. But, uh, but cannabis really was the thread uh, that was common in all of these. So she encouraged me. Hold on real quick. Is is he about to say that shit the fucking uh the fox the fox lady was saying? That um crime is because because of marijuana. Like I hope I hope that's not what he's doing, bro. Uh to look at this connection. And, you know, I'd been a reporter for the New York Times for 10 years, and I'd covered mainly the pharmaceutical industry, but I really didn't have much of a view about cannabis legalization. I, you know, I, I you know, I'd used a handful of times in my life, but, uh, but it was not a drug that I'd used a lot or care. Okay, so this dude smoked weed before. All right, so let me see what you uh, come up with on your own. Um thesis particularly about either way and um and what i found was that she was right um you know of course she was right she treated these people uh and knew what she was looking for and knew what had happened but there's a huge body a huge and growing body of scientific research that that cannabis really is dangerous uh to to a lot of people's mental health that you know it's not just that it you know can sap your motivation or you know, make you sort of fat and lazy. These sort of these 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 yes, tropes about fat, stoners. Sure. Yeah, it's that if you if you use too much, especially at a young age, if you start at a young age, if you start in your teens, your early to mid teens, and you use heavily, and it is addictive. So people will, you know, a lot of people wind up using more than they think they're going to use. You can have psychotic episodes, um, and you can sometimes some people. Uh, probably people with a genetic predisposition, although it's not always clear, um, may develop permanent psychosis. A permanent. Now, I don't. What, what, what... All right. Weed is a common drug across across the land, bro. Across the land, so you get you get somebody who only deals with criminals. They're going to run into criminals that deal that not mean they smoke weed. That's going to happen. Now, let's say you get somebody who doesn't deal with criminals. They only deal with law-abiding citizens that work. 
they're going to run into people that smoke weed. Does that mean that the weed makes you want to work? Like, like is that is that what y'all saying? Psychotic condition known as schizophrenia after using cannabis, and this is um, you know, this is very hotly debated uh, outside the scientific community, but I would say it's not that heavily debated inside the scientific mm. community. I would say the main debate inside the scientific community um, uh, is not whether or not this happens, but how frequently it happens and whether or not, you know, there's a genetic predisposition. Or is it in the, in the, in the scientific community, is it that, okay, this is a fact that is happening, but it has nothing to do with the crimes being committed? causing it to happen so uh yeah yes. just really quick just you know i'm a layman when it comes to marijuana i've never used it so my knowledge is very limited i do know i don't believe this dude that says he'd never used marijuana he looks like somebody that has used marijuana before oh that it kind of goes all across the map though i know people that use marijuana and they get super anxious when they use it and people that have a totally different experience why is that i mean that that is it's a very, very rare. complex drug. It's much more complex than alcohol. Yes. Um, and 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 like a lot of and also it's changed a lot. And this is something that's gotten a lot of attention in the last uh, several years that I try to highlight in the book that I think people are finally waking up to. Um, it really is not the same product it was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. Uh, what's happened is that with legalization, you know, the people who promoted legalization always said, "Oh, this is going to help." Um, make a broad variety of product uh, uh, available to people. There's going to be low strength cannabis, medium strength, high strength. And that's really based on the amount of THC that is in the cannabis. It turns out that was wrong. It turns out that most people who use a uh, regularly want very high strength cannabis. They, or they want to just smoke uh, or vape pure THC. Or they want edibles, which are, you know, which are basically pure THC in some kind of cooked form. And so that's what the industry's provided. You know, we're very good in this country at giving people what they want. And what they want is really strong cannabis. And unfortunately, although as you would expect, the stronger the drug, the more likely you are to have uh, severe side effects. And so that's been another change. You've got, we've gone from people who don't use, or I think people, you know, I, I'm in my 40s, people my age or older, have a vision of this drug is, oh, you know what, like it's a little spliff that gets passed around at parties or, you know, maybe there's a bong that I smoked once in college at a, at a party or something like that. That's not what this is now. This is something that. So hold on. So now you think that the weed from today versus what do you say? He's smoking weed in what, what, what the nineties, you see the weed from the nineties versus the weed of today. The, the weed from the 90s is was just good weed but today you got crack cocaine weed like get the fuck out of here dude i don't understand these people's arguments bro what 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 are you trying to what are you trying to say for real cuz if you're going to say that weed is responsible for all of these negative things all the negative things that happen but then you got a group of people who have no adverse effects to weed. Like, you know what I mean? They like they life ain't they, they life ain't crime. They life is work nine to five, come home, you know what I mean, and smoke. Why ain't those niggas committing crimes and shit if 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 smoking weed, you know what I mean, drives you crazy. That this 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 relatively small group, although it's millions and millions of people. Um, are waking up and using day after day after day, and they are going. I mean, they are going through life basically high on you know on on THC uh, for for in some cases essentially their whole lives, and and that has had really harmful effects on a lot of them. Yeah, this nigga, bro. I don't know who Charlie Kirk is. I don't know who that dude is. Um. But like, like I don't think they know enough about dank, bro. I mean, the one dude said he used to smoke, so I don't understand. What what happened, bro? Like, like, did you used to smoke, or like, like you used to smoke? Like, like, was you a stoner or was you a Hoover, bro? Because like Hoovers, Hoovers grow up to not like weed, bro. 
because they never was able to smoke for real. And motherfuckers was like mushing them and shit. Like how many times this nigga get mush in the face for trying to hit somebody else weed, bro? This nigga. Yeah, bro, my my argument to this, my argument is this, bro. If you're gonna say that um, we is responsible for all the negatives, but then you have a group of people who don't go through those negatives, why don't you say we is responsible for the positives, my dude? That's 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 my. Why why would you not say that? Are you intentionally trying to make we look bad? That's what it looks like. It looks like you ignoring the fact that motherfuckers go through life smoking weed and don't commit crimes and shit other than smoking weed because they made weed legal. Besides that, you know what I mean? They straight as an arrow. Yeah, if you can, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess, I guess, I guess, you know what I mean? I've never heard an argument against what I'm saying. But I don't, I don't know, bro. I'm a stoner, bro. 